dominated or that the Chiefs were dominated? That Brady's Bucks dominated. And the reason I say that is this. This is crazy. Add this to the... To the I know. I got like, too many. Here, here's the thing. I start to look at historical parallels and, mm -hmm. you know, like, what's going to be the bigger story, not just now, but going forward, yeah. right? And so I think, what, what does this remind me of? When the greatest show on turf got upset. Remember way back then? We're going mm -hmm. back 20 mm -hmm. years. Who upset the greatest show on turf? <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's He's won a as Super Bowl a, in three decades. As a, as a different kind of player. Yeah. Back then, he was like, the league wasn't crazy pass happy. Certainly the Patriots weren't. He wanted to, he had to manage the game, be big on third down, let the mm -hmm. field goal kicker hit some field goals, let the defense do its job. He's had so many lives in the NFL since then, including the quarterback of the greatest offense ever on that Patriots team that lost to the Giants. And here, so I'm looking for parallels to this. Hmm. You know what I still remember from that Super Bowl? Not so much who beat the greatest show on turf, but that the greatest show on turf lost. So that would mean that actually the story is the Chiefs losing, except that the Tom Brady that beat the greatest show on turf was relatively unknown compared mm -hmm. to today. Mm -hmm. The Patriots were underdogs. No one can say, like, I didn't think the Bucs should have been underdogs going into the game, especially the way the Chiefs line played. You did but argue Tom, that, yeah. Yeah, but a Tom Brady-led team that just went on the road and beat all these Hall of Fame quarterbacks, that has a great defense and a great offense, no one's sitting here shocked if they dominate. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, like Molly's, like I told you, never bet against Tom yeah. Brady. And I think the enduring story here is going to be when Tom Brady was 43 years old in his first season in Tampa, they dominated the defending Super Bowl champs. That's going to be the takeaway. Well, on a personal level, before I answer that question directly, one of my takeaways is going to be major, major, major props uh, to Bruce Arians. His defensive, his assistant defensive line coach is a female. Mm -hmm. uh, his strength and conditioning coach is a female. Mm -hmm. Two women on the coaching staff for Bruce Arians. They will get Super Bowl rings. And obviously, four of his lead assistants, your offensive coordinator and Byron Leftwich, your defensive coordinator, and, and, and Todd Bowles, along with uh, a, an assistant, you know, a uh, lead uh, assistant head coach, uh, along with your special teams coordinator, are all African American mm -hmm. men. And so when we think about what the Rooney Rule was supposed to represent, Bruce Arians has taken that and he's taken it to another level. And that man has my utmost respect and appreciation and gratitude for what he has done and what he has done for minorities in the sport of the National Football League when no one else has come close to doing that. So he deserves a lot of credit. But I would tell you, the thing that I walk away from is that the, the Chiefs were dominated. Um, I understand that you give the Bucks credit where it's due, and they deserve all the credit in the world, and we'll spend weeks apologizing for doubting them. I know I will, you know, starting with Leonard Fournette tomorrow, because I certainly doubted them. I thought they would score over 30, but I didn't think they would hold – Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs to under double-digit yeah. points and no touchdowns. The defense was field. phenomenal the yesterday. The defense was phenomenal. Devin White, Shaq Barrett, and the rest of the crew. Antonio Winfield uh, Jr. with the deuces or with the peace sign to, to <laughs> Tyreek Hill. JPP knocking JP, ball. Yeah. The whole bit. I mean, they deserve all. And Dominic and Sue, they deserve all the credit in the world. So it's special to see. But I look at the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes was supposed to be the go. We ain't saying that now. Tyreek Hill you know, is elite as a receiver. How the hell are you going to stop him? Well, they did it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey, a future Hall of Fame tight end, even though he had 10 receptions for 133 yards. The bottom line is they were as meaningless as it comes when you consider the level of dominance that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense really, really put at their disposal. Eric Bieniemy, for example, will he get a job ever now? I mean, remember, he was in the last year of his contract for the sole express purpose that the Kansas City Chiefs thought he would be a head coach, which is why he was in the final year of his deal. Now they're talking about re-upping him because he didn't get the job. Well, guess what? Not only did you lose the Super Bowl, you got trounced. And not only did you get trounced, you got trounced by another black man in Todd Bowles and his defense. So you know people are going to elevate Todd Bowles, and I'm very happy for Todd Bowles. And you know they're going to elevate him, but it's going to be if at the You're a black expense. coordinator. You better never lose. It's, it's, well, it's, <laughs> it's unfortunate. <laughs> I it, mean, you know, it's not funny, but I tell you this. I, I don't I, it, think he's know, disqualified from head coach. No, 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 I, no, no. I'm saying he should not be. He shouldn't be. I'm not trying to imply it at all. Of course. I'm just saying he should have already had a job. Right. But they're going to use this as an excuse 
to hold Eric Bieniemy down mm -hmm. by elevating Todd Bowles. So there, there, there you have that. And then, of course, you have Andy Reid, who waited 20 years before finally capturing the Super Bowl championship. And now the very next year, you get trounced. And some people are speculating it was due in part because you were a bit distracted and you heard him talk in post-game where he's saying that I didn't have my guys prepared. Well, when is Andy Reid known for not having somebody prepared, particularly when you got two weeks off? That has never happened to Andy Reid. He's never been accused of that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. Tom Brady proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that it wasn't all about Bill Belichick, that it wasn't all about the Patriot way, that me, Tom Brady, I had a ton to do with the success in New England, and I'll show you how. I'll go to a new place, I won't have an offseason, I'll change the team, I'll change the roster, and I'll change their fortunes. Tom no. Brady is the greatest player in team sports. Well, you could, I could put it more succinctly than that, Ryan Clark. Tom Brady's a better GM than Bill Belichick. <laughs> you can actually make that argument today. You can he actually is. make that argument today. Yeah, you know, yeah, you can make that argument today. He's a better general. In one year, he proved he's a better GM than Bill Belichick because while Bill Belichick is looking for weapons, Tom Brady was highlighting we didn't have any and it was making me look bad and you wanted me gone and you wanted to keep Jimmy G, you know, when he was Jimmy Garoppolo. You let you let go of Jacoby Brissett. You brought in Cam Newton. You thought that all of these things would be answers. You got Nikhil Harry instead of DK Metcalf and A.J. Brown. You got Sony Michelle, who's nothing to sneeze at instead of Damian Harris. You're looking at an abundance of things. But I also will point to last night's Super Bowl and say this. If I told you coming into the game that Mike Evans would have one catch for 31 yards and Chris Godwin, <clears throat> excuse me, would have two receptions for nine yards, are you picking Tampa Bay to win this nope. game? No way in hell. They got and killed. Then, and so yeah. not only did he win the game, but he won the game with Gronkowski shining. Gronkowski, a guy who literally was talking and had tears coming in his eyes and was shivering on a stage one day talking about, you have no idea what I've been through. And other. physically, emotionally, he didn't have it. Now, not only does he come back and play, stars in the Super Bowl, wins it after only having two receptions in the entire yeah. postseason, wins it, but also is excited about coming back to yeah. play He's next having to him. Fun. He went from <laughs> yeah. being finished Listen. to being a champion and excited about literally because he can retire too now. I know, but, but he said, no, I'm not going to retire. Okay, Antonio Brown has anybody, you're a former teammate of this man. We know Antonio Brown's history. We get it. Has anyone ever saw him as humble as he was yesterday nope. in expressing his gratitude to Tom Brady? Yeah. I mean, think about that for a second. Antonio Brown. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Law enforcement officials sitting there calling them out and videoing. You know what I'm saying? Acting up, acting a fool on social media and all of this other stuff. You know, it throws away. He can, all he has to do is shut up. How many days, man? By the way, Brady. Four days. Hold on. Four days. Shut up and you're on yeah, your pocket your $29 million. Oh. Just shut up for four days. He couldn't do it. And he goes from that to being a champion with his head down, holding back tears because of how grateful he is to Tom Brady. And we sit around all the time when we talk about the NFL and we talk about the importance of leadership. And one of the greatest champions this sport has ever known, and Bill Belichick, ignored the champion and leader that he had in the end in Tom Brady. Oh. I, I mean, that's a story, man. Look, and that's Brady, a story. Brady didn't hold it against him that like, he could have been mad at Brown, Antonio Brown.